Oh, hello and welcome here to the St. Anselm Coaches Show, live at Davison Hall on the campus of St. Anselm College in Manchester. Nick and Ask this with you on ESPN New Hampshire and ESPNNewHampshire.com. A lot to talk about over the next 60 minutes. We'll hear from Pat Murphy, head football coach, as we always do in just a few moments to start the show. We'll also hear from the quarterback himself, the sophomore Andrew Murphy, coming off one of his better games the other night against Assumption. On the other side, the field hockey team will get a visit. Nicole Rugen, the sophomore, one of the backs, will stop by and, and speak with us. And they may be a surprise guest in the second half hour as well. The recap and the look ahead will close out the show around uh, 3.20. Special time today. We'll hear it from 2.20 to 320 and then lead you right into Red Sox baseball here on ESPN New Hampshire and ESPNNewHampshire.com. Well, the Hawks, pretty good game the other night, although they fell short 41-27 against Assumption, a very good Assumption team, by the way. Really the turning point was at the end of the first half, St. A's rallying back within three and then with under a minute to go, a 89-yard kick return to the house, reestablished a 10-point lead for Assumption, James Ward giving the credit there for the kick return. And then uh, Assumption able to separate themselves a little bit in the third quarter. But Murphy and the offense rallying back to put 13 unanswered points on the board in the fourth quarter. And again, bring the final to 41 to 27. We'll hear from Andrew Murphy. Started the game 11 of 12 right away. Played pretty well and wound up, or wound up 37 of 57. 315 yards for the sophomore, two touchdowns, two interceptions. But really the story of the night was the play of the wide receiver, Justin Bernard. The junior, 17 grabs, and that is a school record. 17 catches, 154 yards, including a 42-yard long, and one touchdown as Bernard continues to have a stellar campaign and we'll bring in head coach pat murphy right now and i guess start right there another day another splendid performance by justin bernard you said off air you were kind of surprised that when it was all said and done he had that many catches 17 yeah i mean he, he's been consistent all year and he's done an exceptional job but uh, i didn't realize the totals were as high as as they were until the end of the game sometimes that sneaks up on coaches yeah. statistics yeah absolutely i mean uh he he's involved in every facet of our offense as far as run game pass game screen game he has opportunities to catch the ball even when we're running it mm. and um you know kind of mm -hmm. it just the ball kind of funneled to him the other day is but that's the intention though is to get him the ball as often as possible and it seems like it's no secret at this point other teams trying to game plan against it but still he gets his numbers at the end of the day i know he's big i know he's fast i know he's strong i know he's tough but how is it that he has found continued success week in and week out? Uh, I just him being consistent with what he does, and and uh, like I said, you just said it all. He's he's a big physical. He's a matchup problem. Uh, smaller DBs have a problem hanging with him because of his size and his, and how physical he is. And then the larger kids like uh, Assumption safeties just can't keep up with him foot speed wise. And mm -hmm. you know he's, he was a matchup nightmare. And that's why a time a couple times last game uh, they doubled him. With a little guy and a big guy, and he, he still caught two balls in those situations. So, Seemed like the wide receiver core as a whole played much more physical. You just described Justin Bernard there. You had challenged that group early in the yeah. season to play more physical. I thought that perhaps Friday night was their best performance. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're, they're starting to get to, to the level where we thought they would be all year. And, uh, you know, I think they assumed that uh, – that they would just instantly be able to flip a switch and be right back to where they were at the end of last year. Um, and, you know, now they're starting to get back to doing the little things. They're starting to get back to being physical, to being consistent with all those things. And, and it's, uh, it's paying dividends on game day. And the two relate, don't they? The fact that Bernard has put up these gaudy statistics couldn't do it though without that physical play sure. on the outside to set up some of those screens. And yeah, absolutely. And you know, the other, you know, um, side effect of Justin catching all these balls is he's going to get a lot more attention and then 
guys like Akeen Williams and, and Brandon Gomes and Nick Marcella and Eric Fian, those guys are going to just get more catches because they're going to be open. And Andrew Murphy does a good job of, of seeing the field and, and, you know, spreading the ball around. You're listening to the St. Ansem Coaches Show, joined here by head football coach Pat Murphy. The quarterback, Andrew Murphy, will join us in just a few moments. The play of Andrew Murphy, something we talk about, obviously, week in and week out. He is the quarterback and came off such a tremendous freshman campaign. A little bit more consistent this week for sure. Started out the gate hot, 11 of 12, and you said off the air, probably played one of the best games of the year. Yeah, you know, it was his best game. I mean, the big thing with him – from the beginning is he's trying to do too much and uh, he knows it and trying to be perfect instead of just being good, just doing what we ask you to do. Uh, not every play has to be a big play. Not every play has to go for a touchdown. Just take what they give you and, and let it come from there. And the big, big, big plays will find you like they did the other night. And, you know, that's the big thing is just be like that, you know, and, and, and not try to force it, force the issue. And last year he came in kind of unheralded, was a third, I think, on the depth chart at the beginning yeah. of the year. The only person who knew his name a year ago was his mom. So, I mean, that, <laughs> that's, that's a fact. And, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the thing about him, a, you know, a year ago was do this, and it was yes. And, you know, I think he, he knows a lot more. He understands the game. He cares about the game. Uh, he's a mentally tough kid. You know, he's fun to coach. And... Uh, I think that's also a double-edged sword in that he was trying to do too much to start the year, and now he's starting to get back to just taking what they give you. And he made some plays with his feet the other day at the end of the game, which he hadn't done all year as well. When you know it's going back to what he did a year ago, mm. just playing more loose on the whole. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, stop trying to be perfect. Just, just be you, and just play. And have some fun. And have some fun. That's it. Pat Murphy, head football coach, talking about the latest football game against Assumption and a uh, spectacular play on the offensive side led by the quarterback Andrew Murphy and 17 catches a school record by Justin Bernard on the outside. Of course, we can't talk about the offense without at least mentioning Keith Charles. Yeah. That, I thought, a real tough catch and run sure. on that second quarter touchdown. Came out of the backfield, brought the catch in over his head, and then lowered the shoulder and sure. finished strong around the goal line. Yeah, Keith's had a great career here. You know, I think he's the most underrated player, if uh, not in the league, then definitely on our team. Uh, and I think he gets overshadowed by some of the things that Justin does, you know, league-wide. Uh, but I think if you take a look at the numbers over the last four years, uh, as a running back, as a return guy, all-purpose offensive player, he's, you know, at the top, if not at the top, at the you know, within the top one or two. Mm -hmm. Uh, players um, over the last four years in the NE10. I think he's a great player, phenomenal person. He's, he's a great uh, representative of St. Anselm, and you know we want guys like him here in our program. Consistent as well, never Absolutely. takes a play off. Seems like he's always on the field, has uh, done a good job of staying healthy week yeah. in and week out as well. A Absolutely. I mean, he's never missed a game. I don't know if he's missed a snap due to an injury. Right. Uh, he's just, you know, the ideal back uh, for us and what we've done, and I don't think there's anyone in the league that wouldn't kill to have him on the team. So, How about the O-line? You guys put up over 400 yards of offense. Yeah. He has to play pretty well. Yeah, no, the, I think the offensive line uh, took some major steps forward, particularly in the run game. I know, um, you know some of the stats, some of the sacks took off some of the rushing stats, but I know we ran for 150 on a very good defensive uh, team and assumption and uh, they, they had to handle the blitz yeah, as well. Yeah, and you know did a good job for the most part. You know all night in the past game and um, I think they're starting to to come around and you know I'm excited over the over the last half of the year to see what they can do. Getting healthier as well. You got Dave yeah. Boardman back. Yep, Dave's back. Uh, Trevor Jesse got back on the field uh, in a limited role the other day. So I mean we're starting to get healthy really for the first time all year mm -hmm. and hopefully that trend continues. Speaking with Pat Murphy, head football coach, as we always do here on the St. Ansem Coaches Show. Heard a special time today, 2.20 to 3.20 on ESPN New Hampshire, live at Davison Hall here on the Hilltop. The defense, and I thought the defensive line really played well again. It seems like they're continuously improving, yeah. I thought, and have come a long way, really have since week one. Sure. Uh, what would you think there? Yeah, Lou, Lou Lucharty had a great game. He was actually the defense player of the game for us and, and uh, really 
you know, did a phenomenal job with everything we asked him to do. Uh, Josh Cheever, again, could be could be the Keith Charles of the defense. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, everyone uh, else gets a lot of attention, but really Josh is very consistent. Uh, you know, he he's never misses the lineup and, and does a phenomenal job inside. And then, you know, Andrew Leibowitz and, and uh, Justin Walter have been rock solid all year. Yeah, it seemed like they're winning those individual battles that they weren't perhaps winning at the beginning of the year. And also did a good job containing plays to the outside, I thought, as well, especially from the end spot, as you mentioned. Sure, sure. Um, you know, the guys have done a phenomenal job. We keep, I think we're getting better in that area. Uh, we still got to eliminate a couple big plays, you know, a screen and then uh, one long run where we didn't have one of those guys in the correct gap. Um, but we got a, you know, we got a big challenge this week with Merrimack coming to town and and uh, a totally different type of offense where the ball <laughs> at times will be in the air 70 plus times. So uh, we we have to get after the quarterback this week. And really, when we talk about Merrimack. They are kind of a different team than, than you've seen so far. I mean, we've had to, or you've had to game plan, I guess, against the run in particular yeah. matchups, but not necessarily against a wide open passing attack. Sure, we like we played Merrimack a very has. very physical um, season, to, you know, schedule to open up the season with, uh, from Bowie to New Haven to right. Southern, all very physical. Big. We've talked about that. That yeah. September was a, a, sure. a tough schedule. Absolutely, and. Um, you know, this is a totally different animal coming into town this week. Uh, they got a fifth-year quarterback in uh, Clancy, who was last year's uh, offensive MVP in the league. Is he a grad student? Uh, I don't know what he is, <laughs> but he's there. He's been there a while. Uh, you know, he's an exceptional player. Uh, has a lot of skill, uh, skilled athletes around him in the receiving core, spreading the ball around uh, to four or five guys. Uh, you know, consistently every game. Uh, they don't have any one player that we have to stop, as they did a year ago with Isaiah Vagley. Um, you know, Clancy spreading it around, so we've got to we got to do be consistent with what we're doing in the secondary, and we've got to get a pass rush because we can't allow him to be comfortable back there. So, do you do anything different in the week? Yeah, I'd from say, a it, preparation yeah, standpoint I mean, you know, or, or every, a drill at practice, I, something different. Yeah, I think you know, for the most part, defensively, up until this point, we've you, you've had a talk to the D-line about being run, hey, run first, react to the pass. Right. And it's almost the other way around this week. you you, you got to almost take an NFL mentality from a D-line standpoint is, you know, you're thinking pass unless the run shows. And, um, you know, we've got to pin our ears back and, and go get them and force some other guys uh, other than Clancy, you know, to, to right. really beat us, make their running game beat us. That obviously puts more emphasis on the secondary, as you mentioned. Bob, Trevor, yeah, Trevor Jesse, a safety who has uh, returned to the lineup in a kind of limited role in the second half on, on a snap count just to see how he would respond. And, sure. Uh, how much does he play and how much does he help if he does play the four quarters? Yeah, no, I think he's going to play a lot more this week than he did last week. And, uh, you know, I think it puts just, – just the scheme itself puts a tremendous amount of pressure on the secondary um, – in that they have to obviously be physical in the pass game, get their hands on receivers uh, with their eyes to the quarterback and then react up to any run or, or mm. quarterback scramble. Um, and we've got to do a good job, you know, like I said, with the, with the D-line getting a rush and, and controlling their gaps uh, if they do sneak a run or two in there. They, you know, they're not, you know, adverse to running the ball, but, they, you know, they definitely want to throw it. Right. Pat Murphy, our guest, head football coach, talking about the upcoming matchup against Merrimack. It's Saturday, it's 1 o'clock, and it's also homecoming. What does that mean to your club? Oh, we should have a, a huge crowd for that. And, you know, a lot of alumni coming back. I've, I've gotten a lot of texts from guys that have uh, played recently, and, you know, they're looking forward to coming back. And So kind of the whole week leading up to it yeah, is a little absolutely. different. Yeah, definitely. You know, it should, it should be a huge game. We usually have a phenomenal crowd, and, and we're looking forward to it. The fact that it's on Saturday afternoon versus under the lights, you prefer, right? Aren't you oh, a, yeah, absolutely. You're a Saturday yeah, guy. Yeah, definitely. You know, I'd, I'd much rather play a Saturday game any day of the week, uh, you know, over a Friday. Um, What's the weather looking like? It, right now it looks nice. Good. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to it coming out and hopefully some short sleeves and, and uh, getting after the Warriors from Merrimack a little bit. Finally, Coach, some keys to a win on Saturday. Yeah, I mean – We've already talked about we have to get a pass rush. Yep. You know, with four guys, we you know we we don't we can't rely on pressure. 
to get to the quarterback. He and does, let me stop you right there. Do you, do you rotate more guys? Yeah, I mean, along the that, defensive that's been, line, that's been the fresh? plan all year, and it's really starting to help us now. We're playing uh, a lot of guys on the defensive side of the ball. We have a great freshman class, both offensively and defensively, but um, young guys like Kyrell. Uh, you know, came off the edge and had a sack the other day. Uh, Eric Wilson's been playing quite a bit on the defensive line. Those are two two guys I think are going to have bright futures here. Uh, Richie Curran has been helping uh, yeah, with D-tackle. And then uh, we have some guys in the secondary that, you know, could be getting a lot more action this week because of what they're doing. Mm. Um, but, you know, we're going to be playing 22, 23 players defensively, which is what we've been doing the last couple of games, and I think it's going to pay dividends for us this week. What about on the other side of the ball? Yeah, you know, we've we've got to do what we did last you know last game, which is you know we had 98 snaps of offense and we controlled the clock and we had 29 first downs. The only thing we we've got to do more is get the ball in the end zone more. Uh, we had uh, some sacks that kill drives and we had a couple of stupid penalties that kill drives. Uh, we can't do that offensively, but everything else, what we did against Assumption, we've got to we've got to put together again this week and. Um, you know, hold the ball and sus have sustainable drives and ultimately put the ball in the end zone because, you know, Merrimack's been consistent with scoring points and we've got to get back to doing that as well. Could be a shootout for sure. That's it. Coach, we know about Justin Bernard's records for most catches in a game 17. Any idea what the most snaps are in a game? Because 98 has got to be pretty close. We, we ran, I think, 120 a year ago wow. against Seton Hill. Um, I think we had just under – you know, eight or nine hundred yards of total offense, but we ran 120 offensive plays against Seton Hill. I'm assuming that's the that's the record for us. That could uh, be a D2 record. Yeah, I'm not I sure. I'm not sure. You'd have to ask uh, Eric Copeland about the stats with that one, but um, but I think I think that's the the most since we've been here. Good stuff, All Coach. Right. Best of Thanks, luck, Nick. We'll see you on homecoming Appreciate on it. Saturday. That is head coach Pat Murphy joining us as he always does here on the St. Ansem Coaches Show. Assumption. A good test for that young club and made it a game in the fourth quarter. They'll try for their first win against Merrimack, 1 o'clock on Saturday. Again, homecoming, so get here early. The tailgating will get going early, I'm sure. St. Ansem College features 20 NCAA Division II programs, most of which compete in the highly competitive Northeast 10 Conference. There are over 100 home events this season, plenty of chances to catch the Hawks in action. If you can't make it to the game, log on to SaintAnsomHawks.com. You can follow along with free live stats of every home contest. Or better yet, check out SaintAnsomHawks.tv for live video broadcasts of every football, basketball, and hockey game, as well as other select events throughout the year. Nick and Astis here on the St. Ansom Coaches Show, joined now by Andrew Murphy, the quarterback. Welcome back to the show. I think we had you on last year, if yep. I remember correctly. Yep, correct. What has changed in, in a year since we last had you on the show? Um, over the past year, I'd say... It's been a, a roller coaster, yeah, I would imagine. Yeah, it's definitely been a roller coaster. Um, really high expectations coming into the season, and we've just come up a little short every game. So uh, we're, get, we're trying to get back to the little things right now and just take things one game at a time, figure it out, and get the offense rolling, and uh, get back to where we were at last year. So. Well, you certainly had a good game on Friday, 37 of 57, 315 yards and two touchdowns. Anything different about uh, assumption that, that, that just brought out the best in you so far, or, or was it just, I guess, a matter of time until you hit the 300 mark again? Uh, I, th I think we just got back to, to focusing on the little things and focusing on taking what the defense gives us rather than – going looking for the big play, like Coach said earlier. Um, if, if you watch a few of the, the plays for Southern Connecticut, I was dropping back and throwing the ball 40, 50 yards down the field, searching for the big play, and that results in nothing but ended drives. And against Assumption, we tried to really control the, control the clock, control the ball, and I think we had, what, 80, 90 snaps of offense. So that's... 98. Yeah, 98, coach. yeah. So... <laughs> It's an incredible, incredible amount. And, boy, throwing 57 passes, not an easy task either, I will say that. <laughs> uh, assumption, seems like they were blitzing basically every play. How yep. tough to deal with, with that kind of pass rush? How, how tough was that? Um, for us, we have a lot of 
every, everything for me is a pre-snap pre-snap decision so when I see that pressure coming I have a plan before I snap the ball so there were certain plays where they got in there real quick and I took a sack which I, I should have tried to get the ball out of my hands a little sooner but for the most part I think we did a pretty good job handling the pressure and getting the ball out of my hands to the playmakers so yeah not bad Justin Bernard 17 catches that's a school record he just seems like he's unstoppable at times how good how good does that, I guess, make you feel in the pocket, knowing that you've got as good of an option to go to as Justin Bernard, one of the best receivers in Division Two? Yeah, he's he's absolutely incredible. I'll just drop back and I'll see if he has man coverage. I'll throw it up to him ten out of ten times because I know he's going to attack the football. Right. I'll put it up in the air and I have no worries that he's going to go. He's going to go after that ball and he's going to do whatever he can to get it. So. Quarterback Andrew Murphy talking football here on the St. Ansem Coaches Show. What's your relationship like with Justin? Uh, me and Justin are very close. We're in constant communication, always talking about things that we can improve on, things that on and off the field um, le in terms of leadership, in terms of how we, how, we go about, uh, how we go about preparing each week, how we go about things that we're going to take advantage of um, that we see. We watch film together. So, yeah, we're, we're very close. How about the rest of those wide receivers? Same deal? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're, I'm always in constant communication with those guys, whether it's, oh, I'll, I'll run, into them, uh, run into them throughout the day, and it's just, oh, did you see that on film? Oh, did you see that? Did you watch that last night? And we're always talking, always communicating, um, trying to figure out something that we can take advantage of. And, yeah, they're all great guys. So. Sounds like a lot of work. It's a lot of work. To be a quarterback. <laughs> it's a lot of work. <laughs> Especially when uh, I looked down on the sidelines, and for the first time I, I had seen those big signs, those big white signs that, yep. that are held up by players on the sidelines. So if you need to check out of something, you have to take a look at the different icons on the signs as well. Yep. It looks like about 15, 20 different uh, icons on those four or five signs. I mean, how complicated has that been for you? Uh, our our offense is definitely uh, one of the more complex, I would say, in Division Two. But it, I mean, it's the role I signed up for, and I think I've done a pretty good job of uh, understanding rather than just knowing. I really understand what's going on now. So right, sophomore quarterback Andrew Murphy from Franklin, Massachusetts, is our guest here on the Saint Ansem Coaches Show. Last year, as a rookie, got kind of thrown into the fire a little bit. And you not only emerged, but did so with, with flying colors. A four-time four any 10 rookie of the week and also a Northeast 10 all-conference selection when it was all said and done. You had a completion rate of nearly 61% at over 2,400 yards and just a handful of games there at the end of the year through seven touchdown passes. Coach said that last year you didn't really know what was going on for <laughs> lack of lack of a better term, and therefore you played a little bit looser. Now as a sophomore, you've been accustomed to being that leader and, and being the starting quarterback. Is that an actual uh, legit comparison to, to highlight it like that? Yeah, I would, I would absolutely say so. Last year I kind of had no idea um, the specifics. Rather, This year I know the offense inside and out. I know where everyone's supposed to be, and I think that's led to me almost overthinking things a little bit too much. Rather than last year, it was just coach would send me on the field, and I'd just say, yes, okay, I'll get the ball out of my hands as quick as possible. But it <laughs> seems like that offense being as, as complicated as it is, I mean, it's hard not to overthink it, right? Yeah, I mean, now that I know the intricate details of how things work and, uh, and basically because we, we have so many pre-snap, diff different things we can do with uh, pre-snap, I, I, I just overthink it and – that's led to some problems this year, and I've got myself into some problems with that. And I think I have 11 or 12 interceptions just based off poor pre-snap decisions. So. Quarterback Andrew Murphy joining us. Hawks in action Saturday, homecoming against Merrimack. One thing that Coach does uh, say consistently about you is, is that you're accountable and mature, and those are certainly things that, that coaches are looking for from the quarterback position. Is that part of that freshman to sophomore transition? Does, is, is that part of that deal? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, I've, def I've learned a lot in the last year 
Um, definitely accountable is a, a word that would definitely come to mind. Um, no one, no one wants a leader that's gonna point a finger or blame other guys. I mean, when when the offense isn't rolling, it's on me, and I I gotta figure out how we can get back into putting up 500 yards a game, 40, 50 points. So. The fact that you get to play for coach and play in this system that, as we talked about, produces nearly 100 snaps per game. You get to throw sometimes as many as 60 passes per game. Seems like every high school quarterback would love to play in that kind of a system. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, in high school, I was I was in a pro set offense. We would, we would throw the ball maybe 10 to 15 times a game if I was lucky. <laughs> and then I come here, and I'm throwing the ball 70, 70 times in some games. So it's just... It's a blessing to to be here and to be a part of it, and I, I just love playing for this offense. And you probably wouldn't have it any other way. No, so, absolutely right? not. No. What needs to happen against Merrimack on Saturday? Uh, we just have to get, like I said earlier, it's all about the little things for us as an offense. I mean, when when we have everyone going out looking to try to make a big play every snap, it's not going to get us anywhere. We have to control the clock, control the ball, keep that other offense off the field because they're pretty darn good. And uh, I think we'll we'll take care of business. So. Third down seems like third down is going to be big. Yeah, absolutely. Good stuff. Appreciate it. Thank you. Best for of me. luck, and uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. So thanks for coming on. That's quarterback Andrew Murphy joining us here on the Saint Anselm Coaches Show live at Davison Hall as we do it every Tuesday live from one to noon, and then of course you can hear it on the radio as well. ESPN New Hampshire, ESPNNewHampshire.com. This week. 220 to 320. And then the Red Sox take over. Next week we'll be back to our normal time, 5.30 to 6.30. And a reminder, ESPN New Hampshire and Apple Therapy have joined forces to find the most unique, accomplished, and skilled senior high school student athletes in the Granite State. Now every week ESPN New Hampshire will honor one high school senior boy and one senior girl for our Apple Therapy Student Athlete of the Week. And then from the weekly winners, we'll select a Student Athlete of the Month. At the end of the school year, all the monthly winners will be invited to a banquet where we will name our Apple Therapy Student Athletes of the Year and award one boy winner and one girl winner a $2,500 scholarship for college. Requirements, pretty easy. All you got to be is a senior in New Hampshire, in New Hampshire High School, you must play a varsity sport and must have a 3.0 GPA or higher. So to nominate, send the player's name, high school, and accomplishments via email to matt, M-A-T-T, at ESPNNH.com. It's the Apple Therapy Student Athlete of the Year, all brought to you by our friends at Apple Therapy, bringing you back to your life. All right, halfway home, on the other side, we'll talk field hockey as we have a special guest, the Northeast 10 ECAC Defender of the Week. That is Ruk, uh, Nicole Rugen, a sophomore, one of the bright young players for the field hockey team. She will join us on the other side. We'll take a look, of course, at homecoming weekend and all the other events this week in Hawks Athletics. More in a moment here on the St. Ansem Coaches Show, live here at Davison Hall every Tuesday on ESPN New Hampshire and ESPNNewHampshire.com. Well, welcome back here to the St. Anselm Coaches Show, part two. You're on ESPN New Hampshire at ESPNNewHampshire.com. I'm Nick Anastas. Special thanks to Pat Murphy, head football coach, for joining us in the first half hour. Also, quarterback Andrew Murphy, the sophomore. No relation, of course, between head coach and quarterback. Both guys doing a great job. We appreciate them stopping by. Again, the St. Anselm football team will take on Merrimack on Saturday afternoon. That is a homecoming game. Kickoff at 1 o'clock. Tickets are still available. And a reminder, St. Anselm College features 20 NCAA Division II programs, most of which compete in the highly competitive Northeast 10 Conference. 100 home events this year. Plenty of chances to catch the Hawks in action. If you can't make it to the game, you log on to stansomhawks.com. You get free live stats for every home game, or better yet, you can actually watch the games and listen to a live broadcast 
featuring myself and Ben Alcher. That's at stansomhawks.tv as we get every football, basketball, and hockey home game to you this season. Coming up in the second half hour, Eric Copeland is going to stop by and jump behind the microphone. Usually he's behind the scenes. He's one of the producers of this show. He works in the St. Ansem Athletic Department, and he does a lot of good stuff on the hilltop. We'll check in with him in just a few moments, and we'll also talk with Nicole Rugen, the sophomore back of the field hockey team, in just a few moments. And speaking of field hockey team, they went 0-2, unfortunately, last week. Dropped a heartbreaking 4-3 decision against fourth-ranked Stonehill. That was back on Wednesday, giving the Skyhawks all they could handle. And then came home and got shut out 2 nothing against Mercy on Saturday. Two goals from senior Elizabeth Sears, a goal and an assist from sophomore Canada, uh, Canada Stewart, and a pair of assists from sophomore Megan Halligan. Started the Hawks off to a 3-1 lead against Stonehill, but that was quickly cut to one on a pair of second-half goals by the Skyhawks. Freshman goalkeeper Catherine Sears made a career-high 10 saves in the loss and then stopped five more against Mercy. The Hawks return to action on Tuesday. That is today at 7. That is actually tonight. Yeah, they will play Merrimack at Grapponi Stadium. Joining us to preview that game is the sophomore back, Nicole Rugen. Welcome to the show. It would be a little bit better if I had your mic on, huh? Hi. <laughs> Good to see you. Um, you're a sophomore, but you're also a starter and a veteran at this point as well. You started all 18 games as a freshman. What's been the biggest difference this year playing as a sophomore with a little bit of experience versus playing as a rookie last year? Um, last year I had a senior defender behind me to support me more early, so she had more experience than me to help guide me and teach me the roots of de uh, defending at the college level. This year my role is to be... Um, pretty much Morris position to lead the freshmen who um, were in my position last year that don't really know mm. um, the roots of college field hockey yet and just support them and give them tips and help them out when they need help. So kind of going from student to master. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah, I really had to step up this year and um, be a leader in the defensive end. Sounds like you're getting a lot of playing time and I'm sure having a lot of fun as well. Yeah. What's been the biggest challenge? This year? Um, the biggest challenge I would say is probably um, being controlled of the free hits on defensive end, 16 yard hits. Last year, Maura took a lot of the 16 yard hits, so she. Um, so what does that mean? Again, I'm a novice. Here. Okay, so <laughs> 16 yard hits are the ball coming out of our defensive end after a ball goes out of the end line or a foul in yeah. the circle. Um, so last year, Moore took a lot of those free hits and had a lot of knowledge about what was the best option, what was the best pass to get the ball off the field. Um, now that role is kind of my position, and um, along with one of the freshmen, Elizabeth Alley. Uh, so that took a lot of time to get used to trying to make what the right um, decision was and at yeah. all times. So Seems like you learned a lot in a pretty short amount of time. Yeah, <laughs> coach. Um, coach really sits down with us and ha like maps out in certain situations what the best option is to do. Um, especially before every game, we um, look at how their offense defends every 16-yard hit, so we can see where they set up and what the best option for that game may be. So it's. I guess more of an emphasis on watching film and preparing. Yeah, correct. Maybe a little bit this, a uh, little bit more this year. Yes, coach definitely emphasizes watching film on our own and going to her um, to ask her questions if we have any, and then she always watches film on her own and comes to practice prepared with plenty of notes to fill us in with. You guys had gone on a little win streak as we talk field hockey with Nicole Rugen, in one of the sophomore backs. You won two in a row, an impressive. Kind of blowout win back on October the 1st against St. Michael's 4-0 the final there. You follow that up with another shutout against AIC 2-0. You're trying to, I guess, work in a freshman goaltender as well in a new starting role between the pipes. And then you give Stonehill, the number four team in the country, all they could handle last week before uh, losing a tough one 4-3. to Seems like you guys are starting to get uh, your feet underneath you a little bit as the season goes on. Yeah, I think we're definitely starting to play as a team, as a whole unit, not just as individuals as the season goes on. 
um, we're working with passing units and working the ball off the field together as a team. So that helps a lot, along with high intensity at all times and not giving up after we score one goal. Nicole Rugen is our guest. She's got a little bit of a wrist <laughs> brace on. How'd that happen? Um, I jammed my thumb into the turf against Stonehill. How'd that feel? I, it was pretty painful, but <laughs> I just kept playing. I didn't come out, so. Really? Yep. And then you went to the doctor after? Yeah, I went to the trainer the next day, and they told me that I had to go get an MRI, but I'm cleared to play, so. And does it still hurt? Or? Um, It's not as painful as it was, but I just have to be in a cast while I play. And you were telling me that cast was kind of custom molded so that you could still grip a field hockey stick. Yeah, the doctor made it thick enough to stabilize my thumb, but um, cut it off at the wrist so I still have my wrist motion and can handle the stick properly. Modern technology, I guess. <laughs> Good stuff. Nicole Rogan, our guest. A few games left on the schedule, including tonight against Merrimack, that you're on the road next weekend at Adelphi. Another home game against Bentley on the 23rd, and then Three straight road games to close out the year, the final one being at Assumption on November 3rd. So you guys pretty good at home, 4-4. Four and 0-3, four. Oh, for three, though, so far on the road. What needs to happen over the last couple of weeks? Just more consistency like you were talking about doing some of the small things? Yeah, definitely coming out strong and staying strong on the field, not um, coming out strong only in the first half and then kind of settling in the second half. We need to stay strong for the full um, time on the clock. And we need to, after one goal, just keep pounding the goals in there, not just settling for having a comfort. We mm. have to keep pounding them in there. And whose job is that amongst the players to kind of remind everybody out loud that, hey, we need to keep playing hard the whole time? I think it's everyone's job on the team because the minute one person gets down, everyone has to pick that one person up because if one person's down, it could bring a whole team down. Nicole Rugen, our guest. She is from Chelsea, Maine, which is near Augusta, as I found out off the air. How'd you end up all the way down here in southern New Hampshire? Um, I played Majestic's club field hockey out of central Maine, and they focus heavily on um, schools and recruiting. And I um, was in between here and St. Mike's, and um, I just loved the campus of St. A's and I just better thought, campus here than St. Yeah, Mike's. Yeah, <laughs> I just thought it was so beautiful and just felt like home. It was perfect distance from home as well. So that's the answer I hear all the time. Yeah, is the campus, and it is true. If you haven't been here on the hilltop, you are missing out. All right, Nicole Rugen, thanks a lot. Thanks. Enjoy the conversation. Good luck tonight. And good luck the rest of the year. Thank you. That's Nicole Rugen, the sophomore, getting a hand here at Davison Hall, doing a great job. One of those players that just got it right away and started all 18 games as a freshman last year. She's picked up really right where she has left off this year as well. And uh, that's playing hurt, which is always a plus. Join us every Tuesday on ESPN New Hampshire, ESPNNewHampshire.com, 5.30 to 6.30 for the St. Ansem Coaches Show. You can hear this show on the radio. We tape it live here at Davidson Hall every Tuesday from 12 to 1. Today, a little bit different. We're going to hear it earlier as opposed to later. 2.20 to 3.20, we will run the show, and then we'll lead right into Game 3 coverage between the Red Sox and the Tigers, which, of course, you can hear on ESPN in New Hampshire. All right, joining me now is a man I am used to, but perhaps the radio world at large is not yet. That is Eric Copeland. He is, of course, the SID here, the Sports Information Director, and he is as big a part as any of getting this show put together and on the air each and every week. And, boy, that's, that's, that is, oh, I would expect is probably the least of your responsibilities as well. Uh, one of the busiest men on the hilltop. Eric, how are you, my friend? I'm great. How are you? I am good. Favorite part of the job is? I got to be working with the student athletes. That's that's why we do what we do, and uh, you know, making them look good. Not that they don't make themselves look good, but making them look better than they sometimes might. Just kind of publicizing their stories, getting those out there is you know kind of why we do what we do. Obviously, we work directly for coaches and other people like that, but in the end, really, we're doing it you know for their program and for their student athletes. Yep. And you must have that same love for athletics as everyone else in the department, all the players and coaches, etc. 
Absolutely. I think you have to, to to do what we do. I think, you know, obviously having the background in, in communications and in journalism and all that stuff kind of helps. But, right. um, you know, there's a reason I do this for, for St. Anselm and, you know, in the collegiate world and not and not for a hospital. I think for me that I'd be bored. Right. You know, of course, I you know, have loved sports since I can remember. And, yeah, and I think going along with that, I think we kind of need to have a bigger knowledge of – of sports across the board, not mm. just, you know, your footballs and your basketballs and your hockeys. It's, you know, we kind of need to know the rules in and out for, you know, the more obscure games. Like, like you just said, you're a novice for field hockey. That's, you know, when I got here, I you was, are not, though. Uh, I used to be, it's, it's a game that's grown on me. Uh, Mackenzie Frazier, who came in as my assistant is now the assistant de- uh, director of athletic communications played field hockey. So I've leaned on her a lot to mm. understand what, what the random whistles mean. So, uh, but yeah, it's sports like that, lacrosse, uh, both the men and women are a lot different. You know, almost they should be two separate games. So it's just kind of knowing the different sports. And I think once you kind of learn more about them, you get to like them a little bit more. Volleyball, I told the girls this year, wasn't really a big fan the last couple of years. And now this year, I kind of realized more strategy goes into it. And right. You know, once you kind of sit down and, and learn it and or around the game a little bit more, you know, all these games are kind of enjoyable enjoyable exactly eric copeland the sports information director joining us here on the saint ansom coaches show you know another common answer i hear from other sids i've run into is that working in that kind of an environment keeps you young in a lot of ways now i know you're still young you're in your late 20s but at the same time uh i can understand that point being around student athletes day in and day out does kind of provide some youth no question. I think funny that you hit on that because I'm teased a decent amount about now growing older. Uh, <laughs> I've heard the old man comments directed yeah, at myself. Yeah, I mean, I'm only well. 28. It's not like I'm I'm that old, but of course, you know, the freshmen come in every year at the same age, and you're getting a year older, and you know, right. My first year, they looked like they were 18, and now they look like they're 12. And uh, <laughs> funny how that works. But yeah, no, no question. I think it definitely keeps you younger. I think. I don't think it has to, but I think if if it doesn't, I don't think you're doing your job as well as you could be. I think it, you know, you need to relate to the athletes, and I think it helps to kind of build relationships relationships with them to stay, as you say, younger and kind of more in tune to what they like and and what they're doing, just to relate to them better. And you know, I think I think it makes your job a lot more enjoyable and easier to do if you have relationships with them, and it's mm. not just you know who's that guy like. Who tells me what to do every right. once in a while it's you know it's a lot better eric copeland is our guest you made your way over from unh correct yes yeah, started at unh uh went there for four years graduated enjoyed uh, it <laughs> yes enjoyed it a lot uh came back after the summer um i interned in that in their sid office my senior year uh came back after the summer i uh, got a full-time job there as um as an assistant Stayed there for four years, um, and then kind of right at the tail end of that year, uh, of basketball, like at the beginning of March, uh, spot opened here, and this is season number three now for me. So, and how you how you've been liking it? Love it. Uh, great campus, as you just alluded to, um, and I mean it's true. People don't really know this is here, and if you don't know it's here, you're missing out. Uh, the funny part is I lived about a mile away for two years. Uh, and when I got the heads up to kind of come work here, so I helped out with a basketball hockey game before I got the job here, um, had to map quest it to see where it was, didn't realize it was a mile <laughs> away, uh, got here and was just kind of blown away by what was here, almost right. a hidden gem of sorts. Kind of so, sucked away. Yeah, if, if if people think that we just say that, that's that's a true story that I just had no idea this was here. Um, easy place to fall in love with. The people are great that we work with. Uh, you know the kids are great, coaches are great. So, yeah, definitely, definitely different than UNH coming from right. there for four years. But I mean, a good different, not a right. not a bad different. So, Eric Copeland is our guest, sports information director here on the Saint Anselm Coaches Show. Well, with winter kind of on the horizon, your schedule seemingly gets a lot busier. Really, with with four or five different sports, sometimes going and playing rather at the at the same time. You're stretched pretty thin sometimes, on especially over the weekends. Yeah, I think right now, probably in the fall, our busiest time. Really? Uh, straight up. Yeah, just... You think it's busier than the winter? Uh, once you get into the winter, yeah. I think right now, 
you know, having football is just kind of a different animal. Just, you know, that's yeah. not your typical, you know, you just cover it by yourself. I mean, that, that's a different animal. A lot goes into that. Uh, then you get field hockey. What are the differences? In in football yeah. versus, versus you know, any, any other sport? Uh, just, just a lot more staff. Just a bigger, I mean, if you go out and cover a field hockey or a soccer game, I mean, you could probably do that with yourself. If, if you're good other. enough, maybe one person, but right. I think comfortably two. Um, we usually do two or three. I mean, football game, you're talking about hiring people out, you know, to do the clock, gene right. gang, all that stuff. I mean. And you coordinate all that. Uh, yeah, most of it, at least for, you know, kind of who's up in the press box. Um, right. Along with Mackenzie, that's one of her roles is doing the schedule. So she schedules a lot of those kids and coordinates that. Um, yeah, just just a different animal, just the, just the stats. And obviously you're going to have a lot more um, media requests you know, just kind of the nature of it for. And you got to kind of play liaison to the different media as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. That's that's definitely one of our big roles is you know being the liaison to the media and setting up what they need. Um, obviously, they do roll in. We got one for women's soccer yesterday from the Nashua Telegraph, but uh, you know, so they roll in for the other sports. It's just you know kind of natural that you know the bigger sports sometimes right. get the more play with the media. So that's just you know it just becomes just. A bigger ent entity to deal with it becomes a ball. circus sometimes. It can it can it can and you know when you have that on top of volleyball, men's women's soccer, field hockey, golf, cross country, yeah. tennis, all in the fall, it becomes a lot. Um, but yeah, getting to your winter point, I think the crossover that's definitely super busy when you still have all those sports going on with your basketballs, with your hockey's, especially with how early hockey starts. Um, I mean that's definitely super busy for us. And then I think once the fall kind of trails off and you're just left with your main winter sports of hockey and basketball mm. and then you mix in your skiing um it's easy for it's, you at that point yeah just because we've been doing it a while and right. it just you become kind of more in a rhythm because your games are almost on the same days and you kind of know you know what you have to do that week to get it done but um not that the fall is not like that too but it's just when you're trying to when you're being stretched in a million different directions <laughs> uh it's it's hard to it's hard to get it all covered and with only two of us for 20 sports we we split those right down the middle we take 10 each hmm. um and that's that's a lot i mean if you compare that to kind of you know where we were coming from at unh you'd handle you know, two or three and that's it right? right i had you know i had women's soccer basketball and men's basketball and then the runnings as i call them cross country and track and field and that was it now it's you know i'm overseeing all 20 right. obviously mckenzie takes 10 i take 10 so yeah it's 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 a lot, um, but you know we do it, and I think a lot, a lot of the way that we do it is with students. Students are huge for us during game days. Um, we definitely couldn't, you know, couldn't make this thing run without them. So, um, definitely having a strong student staff helps for sure. Mm. Eric Copeland is our guest. He's the sports information director here on the Hilltop. It's his third year. The fact that you are working in athletics, we covered that a little bit, but. I, I would like to say that it's a good way for maybe a teenager who is looking to stay involved in sports but, but just doesn't quite know how to a degree. I mean, you've got to obviously be good at what you do. You have to be a good writer. You have to be a good organizer. But if you have that at least interest in sports, maybe that's some direction that you could recommend to a 17 or 18-year-old student who is still uh, questioning what field they want to go into. Sure, I think this is, you know, this is a great thing to explore. I think most uh, students or younger ch kids that want to get, you know, involved in athletics kind of look, um, you know, at the media side and think that's all there is and right. don't really know about this. And I think I'm a perfect example. Uh, my senior year when I needed an internship uh, for my sports studies major, had no idea about this. Um, and my advisor, shout out to Dr. Karen Collins, uh, <laughs> kind of said, hey, I think, you know, this might be something you're interested in. Um, you know, why don't you go up there and talk to them? Went up and talked to the director up there. Sounded good. Had no idea anything like that even existed. Mm -hmm. um, did it for a year. Loved it. And now, seven years later. You're a lifer. Here we are. Yeah. You got the young one at home? How's that going? Yeah, that's good. That's good. He's, uh, he'll be two and a half in about 10 days here. Um, so he's talking and walking? Talking and walking. Giving orders? Yeah, he's like a little Napoleon. It's, <laughs> it's bad sometimes. But uh, Is he going to play any sports anytime soon? Uh, I, ho I hope so. Um, you know, whatever he wants to do, I'll be supportive. 
if it's karate, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I would love him to play. I mean, I always loved baseball growing up. Um, but like we just talked about, kind of. And you still play baseball or softball now, I suppose. Softball, yeah, over in Merrimack, uh, slow pitch softball league. It's still pretty competitive, from what I understand. Yeah, I'm competitive. I like to be competitive. Uh, we also play. Mackenzie started a, an intramural volleyball uh, team for our, the staff this year, so we play against the students here at St. A's. And, and who wins? Uh, we're we're five and one, I believe. Five, five and one. one. Oh. Uh, Sounds one like team, the, the one students team, need to step it up. Right? Yeah, one team tripped us up a little bit this year, but we, we've kind of righted the ship. Um, we brought in Dan Young, the head volleyball coach, who's been a guest on the show uh, right. a few weeks ago. He's made a huge difference, of course. Uh, That's and, right. Yeah, we're looking, uh, we're looking for win number six uh, tomorrow night. So you went from not knowing anything about volleyball a few years ago to now being a volleyball star yourself. Correct. Yeah, I think, I think week one or two is a lot of uh, – you know, a lot of just kind of hitting it over the net. I think now with Dan, he's kind of coached us up, and I feel like I know what I'm doing now. And nice. uh, yeah, that's helped a lot too. Good stuff. Uh, favorite part of the job besides working with the student athletes would be? Uh, I think the fact that it's not really a job. I've heard somewhere before many times that if you enjoy what you do, you'll never work a day in your life, and it's it's kind of crazy. Yeah, sure, it's it's super busy, and yeah. after. If, after Friday's football game, I was in the press box working until 3.30 in the morning, really? getting ready for field hockey the next afternoon, and it's a lot of late nights and weekends, and yeah, at times I'm like, this is crazy, but at the same time, that there's other times that, you know, that just, I'm just up there statting a game and kind of enjoying it, and it's like, we get paid for this, so <laughs> yeah, it's it's stressful and it's busy and it takes up a lot of time, but, you know, it's... Well worth in the it. end, exactly. In the end, it's well worth it, you know, just to kind of see a happy student athlete, happy student athlete's parents, right? Happy coach, happy broadcaster as well. Happy broadcaster. That's right. This is the guy who puts in the most work out of anyone. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. And I'll see you, of course, before you know it. That is Eric Copeland, the sports information director, giving us some good stuff as he always does. This time in front of the microphone, though, where he did a great job. All right, time to take a look at what's coming up this week on the Hilltop. We'll review a little bit from the week that was as well. And I suppose we will start with field hockey. As I mentioned earlier, tough week for the Hawks. They went 0-2, dropped a heartbreaker, 4-3 to against number four Stonehill, the fourth-ranked team in the country. Had a 3-1 to lead there before surrendering that lead in the second half and did get some good goalkeeping play out of Catherine Sears, just a freshman out of Northboro, Mass. Made a career high 10 saves in the loss and then had another five more against Mercy. So they are in action tonight, 7 o'clock, when they play host to Merrimack at Grapponi Stadium. Men's soccer. They were off last week, idle, chilling. They return to action Wednesday at 3.30 when they face off with Franklin Pierce. That one is at Malucci Field. Women's soccer, 1-1 one and one on the week as they took down Merrimack 1-0 in overtime on Tuesday and then dropped a 2-0 decision against undefeated St. Rose on Saturday. The Hawks now stand at 5-5-1 five, five, and one overall and are 4-4 four and four in the Northeast 10. After 98 minutes of scoreless soccer, St. A's snatched the victory from Merrimack when it Took advantage of a two-on-one breakaway. Sophomore Callie Millett dribbled in on the right of the box and then was challenged by the Merrimack goalkeeper before dishing the ball to her left for Sibian Flattery, who booted the ball into the open left side of the net to give the Hawks the win. Freshman goalkeeper Cassie Quattropani stopped a career-high 10 shots to earn her first shutout. Volleyball. They went 1-2 and two on the week, dropped a 3-1 to one decision to Merrimack College on Tuesday, but battled back to take down Georgian Court 3-1. to one. That was on Saturday. St. A's continued its weekend road trip to Millersville on Sunday where they fell to the Marauders 3-0. Against the Lions of Georgian Court, senior Kyla Gustafson led the Hawks with 12 kills and 10 digs, while junior Holland McNabb and freshman Brenna Gladwell each recorded five apiece. Junior Natalie Steinwert 
dished out 25 assists in addition to her pair of kills, three service aces, and six digs. Both the men's and women's cross-country squads took part in the 18th annual James Early Invitational that was on Saturday afternoon at Stanley Park. The women placed sixth out of 38 teams behind a 22nd place finish from senior Stephanie Kearsley in a time of 19 minutes, 54 seconds. Freshman Meredith Hungerford also provided support. And she finished 29th with a time of 20 minutes, 4 seconds. The men, who were 16th out of 35, were paced by sophomore Kevin Morse. Morse placed 66th in a time of 27 minutes and 54 seconds. Coming up tomorrow, on Wednesday, the men's soccer team, as I mentioned, will take on Franklin Pierce. That is a 3.30 start at Malucci Field. And then on Saturday, homecoming weekend. So all alumni, attention. Women's soccer will get the festivities started at 11 o'clock. That's at Malucci Field. They'll face Adelphi, and then the football game begins at 1 o'clock as the Hawks play host to Merrimack. That is, again, a 1 p.m. kick at Raponi Stadium. That is a look at the week ahead. A lot of people to thank here. Pat Murphy, our head football coach here on the Hilltop. We thank him for joining us, as he always does. In the first half of the show, Andrew Murphy, the sophomore quarterback, one of the bright spots for the St. A's Hawks, joining us as well. We thank him for his time. And then a good conversation with Nicole Rugen, the sophomore back on the field hockey team. She was named the Northeast 10 Defensive Player of the Week. We thank her for stopping by. And, of course, my man, Eric Copeland, the Sports Information Director, giving us some good stuff in front of the mic. We thank Eric for working behind the scenes as well. Mackenzie Frazier, of course, helping us break up the set here. And special thanks to both engineers, Christian Arcan and Tom Rowe, back at the ESPN New Hampshire studios for getting this one on early. We go back to our normal time next week. We'll record it live on Tuesday here again from noon to 1. And then you can hear it on ESPN New Hampshire and ESPNNewHampshire.com from 5.30 to 6.30 which is the normal time. Until then, I'm Nick Anastas saying so long. This has been the St. Ansem Coaches Show right here on ESPN New Hampshire and ESPNNewHampshire.com.